Hi, so perhaps one of the most exciting things around in electronics at the moment is solid state fans and they've got a number of things to recommend them. They're uh, lower power, they last longer, they have a smaller footprint and they're much, much quieter. And when you see them, they're incredibly impressive actually because they're solid state devices. And a friend of mine wrote to me saying he tried to make one and it failed, would I mind having a look at it? And I thought, no, not at all. And when you have a look at it, you begin to realise it's got much more in common with music than it has with electronics. Because if I get a bit of material and hit it, it's going to ring. <laughs> it's quite nice. If I put it up a bit, the shorter this gets, the higher the note. The longer, the deeper the note. And if you hit anything, it's going to do that. A lump of wood, a wine glass, a bit of metal, a string, any of these things will perform that action. They'll vibrate at what's called the fundamental frequency. That fundamental frequency is going to give you the biggest range of vibration. And if you think you want a fan and you want to have to have big range, you need to hit the fundamental frequency. If you have a look again at that piezoelectric fan, you'll see that it's essentially held in one spot. And in musical terms, this is called a clamped vibration bar. So we've got one clamp on it. Now, obviously, in a glockenspiel or a xylophone, it's on both sides, as it is with a guitar, where you've got the um, nut and the bridge clamping it on two sides. In a tubular bell, where you're hanging it, it's really free, but you can think of it also as being clamped at one inch. So we've got a single clamp on a bar. Then we basically take the piezoelectric element and hit it, because the piezoelectric element is what's called the actuator. So I've got my bar, clamping it in one point, here's my actuator, and of course it rings. It rings at the fundamental frequency, there's a few overtones there as well, and we get the biggest range of movement that we can get in that. So, when you're looking at making something like a piezoelectric fan or a solid state fan, then you are more involved in that side of music than you are in the electronics. So, if you know the material, and you know the frequency, and you have the Young's modulus, which is a measure of the elasticity of the material, you can work out how long that piece of material has to be in order to get it to resonate. Now, normally, of course, we're going to use this in a piece of equipment you plug into the wall socket, so ideally, somewhere about 50 or 60 hertz is what you want the resonance frequency to be, because at that range, single clamp, the fundamental, will give you the biggest range of movement that you're going to get for inputting that frequency, so you need to calculate it. Now, that bit of material needs to have a degree of spring, but again, you can use just about anything. Popular choices are aluminium, phosphor, bronze, brass or steel. Those materials are what are used, and they tend to be in the region of 0.1 millimetre thick, because they're not very heavy, they've got a deal of spring to them, they've got a resonant frequency that's relatively short, so you don't need to fan this long. You tend to use something this long. So we need a bit of material, we clamp at one end, and then we need an actuator put onto that material. Now, for a piezoelectric solid state fan, that actuator is a couple of piezo elements. And they come just like that. Put the piezo elements on either side, clamp it, turn on your mains at a set voltage, and that will vibrate. That actually is all there is to it. Now, I don't know if you remember, we did a, a sound vi a device we called the sound bug. It was stunningly simple to make. And if you attached it to a window, it turned your window into a speaker. If you put it onto your desk, your desk became a speaker. If you put it onto the bottom of a tin can, and you know I love tin cans, you could have headphones and look like a Cyberman. It's a awesome bit of kit to knock up because it's just stupidly, stupidly easy. All you need are three components. You need an inductor. An inductor is just a coil around a magnetic element. In this case, it's a ferrite. So we've got a coil of copper around a ferrite. You can easily use a lump of iron. And then you put some rubber bands on it. I use normal rubber bands, but any rubber will do. So neoprene rubber works, for example. Foam works, for example. This latex rubber has a degree of wear. And the last thing that you need is a magnet. If we pop that magnet on there, then we have made our sound book. Now we pop that onto a bit of glass. 
put a music into that and the glass will vibrate like a speaker and of course that is an actuator. That actuator is doing the same thing as a piezoelectric element will do. Piezos for me is a bit tinny, this has a much deeper and richer sound quality to it because it's very similar to a speaker. So we did that and I'm going to use this as my actuator rather than the piezoelectric elements although in theory it's identical. Now I'm going to put 50 hertz in it and give you a close-up of it. So there's my sound bug. That's the inductor with its coil. There's the ferrite core. There's the coil. There's the rubber bands right there. And I've got a magnet sitting onto it, on it. And I've plugged it into a desktop supply that runs at 50 hertz and an AC 6 volts. And if I put, you guessed it, a tin can on there, I turn that on. Yeah. You should just be able to hear the hum of the mains. So that is now resonating this tin can at 50 hertz, which is obviously very low. So it works as a resonator, in which case it's working as that bit of copper pipe. This is the actuator that is hitting this and causing this to vibrate. All we have to do to make that a fan is take our worked out piece of metal and stick it on there and it will be a fan. So there's my bit of steel on there. I haven't worked this out, but let's give it a little bit of SC. And I've cut a bit off, and you see how short it actually is. So after a little bit of tuning, which meant cutting off some the end of it with a pair of scissors, I got it about three centimetres long and I got about a centimetre deflection. It's pretty good. The best they've got, I believe, is around about two centimetres deflection and that's with a strip of phosphor bronze. So I'm quite happy with that, to be honest. But that's about all there is to solid state fans. You need something that's going to vibrate and you need to make sure they will vibrate at the frequency that you're going to input it. Now, if you're going to plug it straight to the mains, that's 50, 60 hertz. If you're going to use a different frequency, then obviously the length will change. So it depends very much on the material, very much on what frequency that you're going to run it. And now, those, um, those frequencies you can calculate, or you can just look up online calculators. Then you need some kind of actuator at the bottom, which is a piezo element, and I used induction with the sound bug, Clamp down one end so it's a clamped bar and bingo! You've got yourself a solid state fan. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was of help. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.